Hey guys, I think it's uh, I think it's fair to say that most Aussie guys uh, they want to live the good life, and for me, growing up out here, I thought I knew what the good life was. Uh, so for me, the good life was all about uh, getting your own place, uh, getting a family, having some kids, and doing the things that I enjoy. And so in terms of house, you know, I didn't want like a really big pretentious house, uh, but just but just a nice place, good block of land, maybe a swimming pool. Maybe, you know, you could do a bit of work on one of the walls so you could point to it and say, you know, that's the bit that I did. Uh, for me, I'd want to have a boat out the front. Uh, for me, it'd be a sailing boat. I know we're a long way from the, from the harbour beer, but that's what I loved when I was growing up. I loved sailing. And for me, the good life was about having a family, about getting married, having some kids and enjoying life together as a family. And it was about doing the things that I enjoyed. Growing up here, I loved to go to the Blue Mountains. Uh, spent time hiking, camping, canyoning, and doing all these things. And that's what I was looking forward to. That was the good life for me, getting the place, having a family, and doing the things that I enjoy. And as I was growing up, that's where I was headed. So I was studying electrical engineering at Uni New South Wales, so on track to get a good job. Uh, I was going out with a, a nice girl, so on track to get married, have the kids. And while I was at uni, I was doing the things that I loved, uh, spending time sailing, out on the water and doing all those different things. And so on the outside, it looked like things were going pretty well. But on the inside, well, you know, every so often there would just be questions that would come up. And I'd ask myself, well, is this really the good life? Is this what life really is all about? Is it just about getting the house, getting the family, and doing the things that I enjoy? And these questions, they would sort of, you know, come up in the back of my mind, back of my mind every now and then. And I know I'm not the only person to think like this. And I know that for a fact because, well, in the Bible we find a man who I think has a very similar experience. So the Bible talks about this man, he says he was a ruler. So he's the kind of guy, he had power and authority. He was, he was used to things going his own way. And he was rich. So back then, you know, he would have had uh, herds of goats and flocks of sheep, big house, uh, lots of servants, lots of land. He was the kind of guy that was enjoying the good life, right? But he was also a pretty good bloke. You know, the kind of guy that, that you could rely on as a friend. A good bloke, right? He, the kind of guy you could always rely on to, to give you a hand. The kind of guy that would always do his taxes right. The kind of guy who always trying to, trying to do the right thing. And yet, for this guy, he'd heard that Jesus was in town. And so he went up to Jesus and he said this. He said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, it's an interesting question on a couple of ideas. Because first it shows that even though this guy, he was living the good life, he was set. Well, he still had this question, you know, he wanted this, this eternal life, this, this life forever with God. And so you could see he had those same questions that I had. He was looking for something more in life. But also you could see that when he asked that question to Jesus, he was, he was really just after some assurance. You know, for the crowd looking on and seeing this man, if there was anyone who would get into heaven, it was this guy. Remember, he was a good bloke. He always tried to do the right thing. And so he'd come to Jesus, and I think he just wanted Jesus to say, you know what, mate, you're doing a good job. Just keep going, and things will work out in the end. That's certainly what the crowd were expecting Jesus to say to him. But you know what he said? Something a little bit surprising. See, the man had come to him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He's a pretty good bloke. And Jesus said to him, he said, if you want eternal life, if you want treasure in heaven, if you want to live with me forever, what you need to do is sell everything that you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. Now this, this was a surprising thing to say. No one was expecting him to say that. They were expecting to say, you know, you're a pretty good bloke, keep going and you'll be all right. And, you know, for me, that was a very surprising thing if you told me that. People were really shocked. It's just, it's not what you would expect. And see, for me... You know, as I said before, I would have been shocked at something like this because I thought I knew Jesus and I was confident that I knew Jesus. I went to a Christian high school, one very similar to this one. I spent six years of divinity classes and chapel services and I thought I knew what Jesus was about. I thought he, I thought he just came to sort of tell us, you know, just give it a go and you'll be all right. But for me, the turning point came when I realized that I was wrong, when I realized that I'd I didn't really know Jesus that well. The turning point came when my sister invited me to church and I decided to go along. But see, that was the difference, right? I decided to go along. At school, 
you have to go to divinity classes and you have to go to chapel. And so even though I was, you know, I was sitting in the room and I, I could, you know, I, was, I could hear what they were saying, well, I wasn't really listening. You know, I was a teenager and I was thinking about all sorts of things. And so when I finished school, I thought I knew Jesus. I thought I knew what he was all about. But I hadn't really understood it all because I wasn't listening. And as I said, the turning point came when my sister invited me to go to church. And I decided to go. And when I went to church, I actually started to listen to what they said. And for me, it started a process of, of investigation. Of, as an adult, reading the Bible for myself. Uh, thinking about what Jesus said and what he did. And it took a couple of months. But through that, I came to realize that I'd been wrong about Jesus. Uh, that he didn't come just to say, you know, give it a good go. But he came to say that, that no one is good enough. And in fact, that's what he was trying to say to this rich ruler. He wasn't sort of trying to give this universal law that if you want to be a Christian, you've got to sell everything that you have. He was just trying to show the man that, well, while he looked good on the outside, while he looked like a pretty good bloke, on the inside it wasn't quite right. And see, for this man, the problem was that he loved his money more than God. And so he wasn't willing to give it up. And by that, Jesus was showing that, well, no one is good enough for God. Because remember, this guy, he was a pretty good bloke. If there was anyone who was good enough for God, it was this guy. And yet Jesus said, well, you're not good enough. And it's really interesting what happened next, right? See, the crowd, they were watching what had happened. And as they saw this, this guy... And Jesus saying no to him, well, they, they began to look at each other. And they asked each other, well, who then can be saved? And it's a good question. If this guy couldn't, if he couldn't get eternal life, then, then who could? And it's very interesting what Jesus said next. He said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. See, Jesus didn't just come to say, no one's good enough for God. But he also came to offer a new way, a new way for, ha for us to have this, this eternal life, this life forever. And it came through him willingly giving up his life on the cross and raising to life again. And so for me, eight years ago, as I spent that time uh, thinking about what Jesus said and thinking about it as an adult, taking the time to, to think about it, that's what I came to realize. I came to realize that, that Jesus, he is the answer to the questions that I have, that the good life it's not about just getting your house and a family and doing the things that you love. I mean, they're good things to do. But Jesus, he is the one who offers the good life. And it's knowing him, that's the good life. And I realized that he is the answer to those questions I had about whether this was everything in life. And I also came to realize that, that by myself, I wasn't good enough for God. And that I didn't deserve those things. But thirdly, I came to realize that, well, that's what Jesus offers freely to us. And so eight years ago, as I went through that process, at the end, I came to accept the gift that God has offered us, his gift of eternal life, of life with him forever, and being able to know him now as our father and to be his son now. And can I say that made all the difference for my life here. It gave me this new sense of, of confidence and purpose in life. See, I came to realize that before I was, you know, I was always trying to live deep down, trying to impress other people. And I came to realize, well, it doesn't really matter what other people think of us. What really matters is what, is what God thinks about us. And that's not dependent on what I do, but it's dependent on what Jesus has already done. And so as I became a Christian, it gave me this, this new sense of confidence and freedom and this new sense of purpose. Uh, and it changed my life uh, completely. And I, I guess what I really want to say to you guys tonight is for me the turning point came when I decided to investigate Jesus as an adult. See, I, when I finished school, I thought I knew Jesus. I, I thought I knew him. I'd you know, been to six years of divinity classes and chapels. That's, that's quite a lot of time. But when I finished school, I didn't really know Jesus at all. It was only when I took the time as an adult. And it, it took a bit of time, actually, a couple of months. Uh, reading the Bible for myself, uh, going to church for a bit, uh, reading some books, chatting to different people. But for me, that was the big turning point. And I guess I really want to challenge you guys just to think tonight that maybe you're the same as me. Maybe you think you know Jesus. Maybe you don't know Jesus at all. But for me, it was when I decided just to investigate and take the time as an adult uh, to think about it, that it changed my life completely. And then I realized that the good life is not about the house, the family, and uh, doing the things that we love. Uh, but the good life is what Jesus offers to us. 
So look, I'm really glad to just spend this little time uh, sharing with you tonight. It's a great privilege, something I love to speak about, and I'm happy to keep speaking to people about it otherwise. Uh, but I'll pass back uh, to Mark as he comes up. But thanks for listening.